Hey, this is Mr. Peterson. This screencast is about the process of meiosis and the relationship the process has with chromosomes. So we're going to take a look at chromosome number, chromosome type, and what that has to do with sexual reproduction. So big ideas, sexual reproduction, meiosis tied together. So here's a human egg cell and it's being battled for by a bunch of sperm cells. So these sperm cells, kind of the race, the first one to get there first that claims the prize of fertilization. So you can see there's one sperm cell there in the middle that's probably one. It probably is going to fertilize this haploid cell. All right, now you, first of all, let's talk about different types of cells you have in your body. Uh, you have body cells, so skin cells, muscle cells, so here's some muscle cells, some fat cells, some salivary gland cells. Uh, those have 46 chromosomes in them. So body cells and somatic cells, those are the same thing. So if I use those two terms interchangeably, that's what that means. So body cells and somatic cells. Then we also have reproductive cells, which are known as gametes. And those are produced in specific structures, ovaries and testes, and they produce egg cells, ova, and sperm cells. And those are gametes, and the big deal about those is they're containing the genetic material that uh, is going to get passed on. Yeah, so sperm cells, not nearly that big compared to that uh, sex cell, that egg uh, that's shown there. So not to scale, sperm cells are much, much smaller. Okay, so you got two different kinds of cells. You have gametes and you have body cells. But you also have different types of chromosomes. So of those, of those mess of chromosomes that you have, those 46, those 23 pairs of chromosomes, uh, some of them are involved in just uh, making sure your body does what it's supposed to do. But then we also have some chromosomes that are determining your sex, right? Okay, so let's take a look at that uh, set of chromosomes that's circled in yellow. Those are the same shape, they're the same size. Notice they have a number one under them. So the chromosomes are separated based on their size, their patterns, um, and this is chromosome number one. Now, why are there two? Why are there two chromosome number ones? Well, you get one from your mom and one from your dad, right? And we call those homologous chromosomes. Homologous chromosomes, that's kind of a big idea. Homologous chromosomes uh, have the same genes on them. So when you get a chromosome from your mom and a chromosome from your dad, those have the same genes on them. As far as autosomes, the normal uh, non-sex determining chromosomes, they have the same genes on them. We call them homologous chromosomes. So chromosomes 1 to 22, those pairs, are called autosomes, and they really have nothing to do with determining whether you're male or female. That's where the sex chromosomes, in humans anyway, the X and the Y determine whether you're uh, male or female. So down there circled in red, we have an X and a Y. Y is just a little tiny fragment of a chromosome. Not too many genes on it, but some important genes for, for, for guys anyway. Okay, <clears throat> so we've got different types of cells. We have different types of chromosomes, and we have different chromosome numbers. Now, we've talked about this already, the numbers of chromosomes you find in normal body cells and the number of chromosomes that you find in sex cells, in the gametes. So the term is called diploid. So normal body cells have a diploid number. So for humans, it'd be 46. If you're a fruit fly, it'd be 8. If you're a best <laughs> a bushel boy tomato, uh, it'd be 98, and so on. Gametes are going to be half that number. So body cells are diploid. So how does that happen? Well, when you have two cells that have half the number of chromosomes, sperm cells and egg cells, when fertilization occurs, we wind up with a, a double set of chromosomes. So diploid, again, has half a set of chromosomes from each parent, half from your mom and half from your dad. And you'll notice that they're the same like in the picture below. You have four chromosomes, two of them are big and two of them are little. So that refers back to that pairing of chromosomes. Gametes have half the number of chromosomes, so they've got one big one and one each and that's all they have. So when they do recombine, we wind up with uh, the full complement again. So.
let's compare mitosis and meiosis as far as chromosomes go. So in mitosis, chromosome numbers got to be maintained in animals and in plants and in fungi. Right? And it happens when cells differentiate. So we get different types of cells like muscle cells or fingernail cells or cheek cells or hair cells or whatever. It's also involved in repair and growth. So that's mitosis and the chromosome numbers got to be maintained. And that happens through the process of mitosis. That produces genetically identical cells. It results in diploid, so two N cells. And it happens all the time. And it's a form of asexual reproduction. And by sexual reproduction, I mean the exchange of genes. So there's no exchange of genes in mitosis. Meiosis is different. So meiosis happens um, to cause genetically unique cells. It produces half the number of chromosomes in the cell. So look at this cell in the picture. We start with four, goes through a couple of cell divisions. We wind up with four cells that have half the number of chromosomes in them. It's involved in sexual reproduction. So those cells at the bottom of this little pyramid are going to turn into sex cells and they're going to divide to the point where they have a dip or a haploid number um, and they're ready for sexual reproduction. So meiosis and, and chromosome number, some things to think about. So I hope you come back with some questions about this. Hope that gets you curious. Mm -hmm.